up my peeps we are back for 2023 season shriners uh first episode of the year uh, i was on inside golf podcast uh, a few weeks ago uh with 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 andy lack uh which was uh you know a ton of fun uh always enjoy kind of talking to andy about you know dfs golf the slates uh total nerd i'm a total nerd for that type of stuff he's a total nerd for that type of stuff so uh, you know, we can go on and on about that stuff for, for uh, you know, hours. So hopefully you guys in, in enjoyed that. And hopefully there's a few more people maybe listening this week because of that. Um, yeah, so I, 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 um, this week we're, we're, you know, again, back for the Shriners. It's uh, at TPC Summerlin this, this week, uh, same, same, same course it's been at uh, 7,200 yards 7255 yards uh and the, the course is a total birdie fest um i just wanted to give a quick rundown of the course sometimes i'll go more into 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 courses that i think you need to go more into uh i don't think too much time needs to be spent on this the course this week because uh it's going to be a total birdie fest in 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 my opinion i don't think it's really that crazy um to anticipate the low the, the average winning score over the past like eight years has been like 22 under uh and that includes one you know kind of outlier where the wind picked up and the winning score is like minus 10 maybe that can't lay one uh so you know this it's it's pretty easy course and and you know t- where i a lot of people typically will start is is you know where where players will start which is off the tee and this week I've seen uh, some people, you know, put put no no weight into uh, off the tee whatsoever, um, and and uh, others just put less weight into off the tee than than normal. So the re- the reason that is is because uh, altitude, it's higher altitude in in Las Vegas, and because of that, the ball t- typically travels farther. So you know, I, and just to back that point, if you don't believe in science, you know, there's there's people that have actually played the course uh, that have, that have, that have, uh, you know, talked about this, this week. And it's actually something where if you look at the stats, it, 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 uh, you know, holds true as well, where, you know, the ball is going to fly an extra 10 yards and, and, and roll out, you know, further it, typically because the ball is, you know, being hit further than it does on, on, on most courses. So it, it typically brings guys who it, it doesn't even, it, it doesn't even bring guys who are shorter necessarily into play. It just kind of levels the playing field. I think from what I've seen um, in terms of, you know, the types of players that have won this tournament. Now that's not to say Bryson DeChambeau didn't bomb, you know, bomb his way around this course and win it. Uh, I think I also heard that he led the field in like accuracy that week as well too. So it was, he was, he was driving the ball, you know, not, not a, far but also not necessarily wildly like he he sometimes will matt wolf has finished here twice <coughs> also a bomber um but i guess what i'm saying is it, it, it you know and a lot of people have said that this this week when you when you look at course types and you see that kevin nas won this tournament and then bryson d chambeau's won this tournament um and you want to try to like assign a player type to this tournament like those guys are polar opposites so not necessarily targeting a bomb or not not necessarily targeting a short hitter just just kind of t- targeting you know guys who hit hit good total drives like I typically always always do and that's always something I maybe weigh more or, or, or I just you know where some people will say you know it's a driver and distance week or it's a driving accuracy week I always like consider total driving more than that type of stuff anyway if that makes sense because i think total driving always tells more of a story than distance um and and accuracy at times so uh it's it's not necessarily something i'm you know like like i think actually this week if you're if you're slightly sporadic off the tee that's that's probably fine 
um, in, in terms of this course is I think one of the highest greens and regulation percentage on the entire on the entire tour in terms of the places they will they will visit this year. Uh, that being said, if they miss the greens, that's actually probably the toughest parts of the course. There's a lot of bunkers surrounding the greens and the around the green play in terms of the stats is typically where guys bleed the most strokes on this course. So if there's something, you know, if people, people out there who like, like, you know, weighing things more on certain weeks than others, I'm not necessarily, I'm not one of those people really at all. I, I don't really change my model all that much on a week to week basis. I will, um, when I think it, it, it needs to be, and this is not one of those, this is not one of those weeks in my opinion. Um, so, but, but a lot of people will, will, you know, look to see certain courses. This is, this, this is more important than that. And then if you're that type of person around the green might be that statistic this week, I actually do think, you, you know, that is important this type of week. If, if there's a place you can go off the rails, that's, that's, that's where it is. So I personally would like a guy that has a little bit of short game skill. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, you, you know, just, I think you just kind of go with your gut, go with the numbers this week, go with, go with kind of, um, you know, who you think the right plays are as always. And what we'll do and what I'll kind of try to help hopefully you do is, is, is make some of those decisions. So let's go to the board again. I don't think, um, I don't think there was like too much to focus on, on the course or the weather this week, both again, easy, easy course. I think the only, only thing that would potentially change that is the weather and the weather looks fine to me. Um, as of right now, you always want to check that again. So, so, you know, make sure to check that in the morning, but here is what we have for, for the board this week. And uh, if you haven't seen this before, I just it, it basically uh, M M one is my model rank. And that's a longer term. Uh, that's a longer term measure of, of, uh, of how, how, you know, I've, I think golfers are, are playing based on certain statistics and certain weights that I'm sure a bunch of people, you know, create models for, um, I do it over multiple time periods and why I do that just at like a high level is like, yes, I care how a guy historically is playing, right? Like over a long period of time, you want to, I, I always will make, I always will lean to a guy who's playing, who's a longer term modeling out better than short term. However, the, I guess the caveat is I still want to know like how the guy is playing recently. Right. Like, um, so like here, let me see if I can, I can get a good example here. So like Tom Kim, if I modeled him out, uh, or here, wait, what's a better example here? Um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on from that point, but anyway, long, long story short, the, the, the M1, <laughs> I just forgot what I was going to say. So that's why I said I was going to move on, but M1 is the model. I model it out over multiple time periods just to say, Oh, what I was going to say is I just, regardless of how well a guy is modeling out long-term, I still want to know how they're playing short-term. I, I think I was just having trouble finding a specific example as I was going through it, but um, just because a guy models out long-term doesn't necessarily mean like, it, like he could be playing like absolute dog shit, like in a, like really, really bad way. Like you always want to understand the context of the statistics like that. I'm a big believer in that. So I, and, and I'm a big believer that especially a week like this, where it's, it's, it's guys where we don't have that much data on to begin with, that things are going to get skewed very easily when you're, when you're modeling stuff out because there's, there's less data. Um, so just all things to be careful with and consider when you're, when you're looking at this type of stuff and why I run it over multiple time periods and not just one, uh, but yeah, here's the board. Here's what we got so far. These ownership numbers mean absolutely really nothing right now. Uh, I well, I say that base, basically because Tuesday ownership numbers always mean nothing. These uh, ownership numbers are slightly under calculated in terms of they're about four percent off of I think what not I think of what I know the numbers sh should total up to be right now and then on top of that and this is to no one's fault but davis riley just withdrew davis riley and this is like a great example of of why tuesday ownerships mean basically nothing um 
Davis Riley, 14% ownership projected, uh, like this initial pro- ownership projection that I'm, I'm, I'm pulling. Well, he just withdrew. So that's going to go close to zero. And guess what? That 14% now is going to be allocated somewhere else because math, that's how math works. Um, so these ownership projections, 4% kind of off to begin with. And then you factor in the fact that there's 14% now that is off because that number is going to go to zero. Uh, it's not off, but it, because it hasn't gone there yet, but it w- it is off. It, it will go cl- uh, essentially close to zero. And because of that, these are now like 18, eight, these numbers are 18% off. So just something to, this is just an example of, of, um, and they might, these might be the best ownership projections you could get on a Tuesday night. Um, it's, it's so, so all things to consider, um, typically people get them, the, the, the closer it gets to Wednesday, the, the closer, the more robust they get because the more data they have to look at, um, and all that stuff and more people have filled in their lineup. So, uh, all long winded way of saying, take the ownership projections with a grain of salt. So, um, you know, here is the board this week. Let me, uh, I had it, I had it sorted by my model. Let me sort it by salary. We got Cantlay coming in as, as top price, Homa 10, six, Sung J 10, four, Weiss nine, nine, Tom Kim nine, seven and Montgomery nine, five. Let's stop it there. I kind of want to bucket. That's like my, that's like my first grouping, right. In terms of, in terms of, um, in terms of like uh, top, top guys, I think the one, two, three, four guys I have highlighted in red here are going to garner the most ownership between any four guys on the entire board. That's not that crazy to say. I just think that that's a fact. So just something to consider. Um, maybe don't play all of those guys. If you play those guys, make sure you play them with guys that are significantly less chalky. I will probably play one or two of those guys. Sadly, I think Cantlay's membership I think Cantley's number sh- number ownership number projection right now is a little high, but I also could be wrong. Again, this is just I haven't dug into this. Uh, I don't really do that as much anymore, except for big weeks, um, digging into the ownership stuff um, because there's places that I think are getting better at at putting it out there, and uh, because of that, I I don't need to necessarily make as many adjustments. Um, so I'll wait for those numbers to come out, but I just wanted to see something for the sake of content and talking, talking about this type of stuff. So looks like Cantley's coming in a lot. I, I say all that because Cantley's coming in a lot higher owned than I thought he would. And the reason I say that is because he's 11 one and he's rightfully, he's rightfully priced in, in my point of view. So this is a better job. I think this week in terms of the, the pricing up top, um, but I just thought that because if you look at like the past couple of weeks, there haven't been that many guys with like a lot of win equity. That's something I always, that's always important to look at in terms of who you're putting in your lineups. Yes. Leverage is very important. You want to be different, but at the same time, like it, it, you, you, like uh, you don't want to just like not put a guy in that, that is makes like a ton of sense just because he's high owned. You can always pivot off. You can always make up for your owner. You can always make a guy who's perceived as chalk, not chalky by playing him in a total in a, in a lineup with total ownership that that's lower than, um, you know, what it needs to be to not be duped. So, you know, don't just cross the guy off the board of the board for that. I, I, again, you know, I, I think I will play maybe two of the red guys out of all out of these these first I meant to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two of these guys in red I'll probably play. Uh so yeah, it's not like I don't like play chalk. Like I like I think and and some of this maybe I could argue isn't necessarily chalk if how however you want to look at it. I, you know, can't I it, sometimes I you know, it's a misprice or you could just actually make the argument that Cantlay is worth that price and ownership because he is that much better of a player than Homa. I don't, I'm not making that argument. I'm just, I'm thinking out loud in terms of justifying, like when people like always are quick to label somebody as chalk, I think it's depends how you play them and um, what their price is and, and, you know, who they are and what their upside is and all of that stuff. So um, 
like Cam Davis, 17.2. I think a lot of that is because people that actually move the needle, not named me because I don't move the needle, like him this week. And I, I understand it. He's playing really well. He's played here decently. He drives the ball incredibly well. He's a good wedge put, put player. He puts well on this on this type of surface. And if you watched him play at the President's Cup, he was one of the most, um, you know, visually appealing. He was one of the most uh, uh, impressive guys. You know, he played played some of the best golf. Same with Tom Kim, which is why, you know, he he's coming in at 22.5% ownership right now. You know, if Tom Kim wasn't 22.5% ownership, I'd, I'd want to play him um, probably this week. I think he's really good and he's just playing good golf i'm not gonna you know i've jokingly sent people texts and and said that i think he he has the potential to really be um one of these you know next generational players i'm not saying that means he's tiger woods it's not what i'm saying but he's just 20 years old he's already won on the pga tour he really has been impressive in all of his starts since playing on on the on the pga tour and in the president's cup so I get the hype. I get the chalk there in terms of if you want to go to him. Um, Montgomery is harder for me to swallow just because his putting numbers have been so crazy. Um, But he's a UNLV guy. He's probably played this course before. He's two top tens and his two P- first two PGA tour starts. He's done that gaining a ton of strokes putting. He's probably going to need that need to do that again this week. Um, You know, because it's probably going it, to, it, it's going to turn into a putting contest to a certain extent. You're going to have to get to 20 under, I think, at least to, to win this tournament. The weather whole, weather stays true to what it what it is. So um, hold on a second. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what I would say in terms of advice, I would give give away here, and and just my highlights and stuff like this. Yellow is just guys I like. Red is guys I like, but I thought we're going to be chalky. And these are these are some of this is backed by the numbers. I won't like confirm that or deny that till I see Wednesday night ownership. <clears throat> but so like I, in terms of if you're looking like oh like he has these guys highlighted, I j- I'm just I, I have a, uh, a fuck ton of people highlighted so. Uh, just I'll go through I'll go through all of them, but I'm not necessarily all in on any of them. Just wanted to put that out there. Uh, so what would I like it, looking at this now? Here's how I think about it. Right, Cantlay is the most superior talent, but I do think it's a week where there's a, there's other players with with a good amount of win equity in Sungjae and Homa. I think you'd be crazy to fade all three of these guys completely. Uh, sometimes what I like to do is I will, I will fade a big group of guys in a few lineups, but not in my player pool, if that makes sense. So I'll like play one or two of these guys in this example. Um, I'll play one or two of these guys in, in, in this example. And, and, uh, because I think that, you know, they have a ton, they have a lot of win equity, um, but I I will have also create lineups where I don't have them in it at all, just to be like wildly different. Um, but you're chopping out a ton of win equity. Those are the three favorites in Vegas to win this week, right? And there's there's a reason why. I mean, on top of Cantlay uh, being the the kind of guy in this field, um, he's got incredible course history here. Uh, so does Sungjae, though. So all, all interesting. Um, you know, to, to see, I think most people would say like, oh, Sungjae should be 10-6, Homa should be 10-4. Maybe, maybe, probably, because if you factor in course history, it Sungjae has has the edge, but both of these guys have been on fire. And both these guys played incredibly well in the President's Cup. Homa doesn't have as good course history, but he has a ton of win equity. And it's, a, it's, it, it's just like out on the West Coast, I, I think this this he's just like riding a heater right now and he's he's one he, he's a guy that wins a lot of tournaments like like he, lately anyway like he's won a lot like over the past two years where not a lot of guys like win but they play really well so if the ownership number if he's getting squeezed like i'm i'm definitely gonna throw him in 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 lineups uh, I also like Weiss, but I'm not going to play Weiss probably as like uh, Weiss won't be the first guy in my lineup, probably play him with <clears throat> Cantlay or Homa or Sungjae, whoever I decide there. 
Uh, and again, I've told you I'm playing. I'm I'm. I'll tell you. Here's here's how I think about things as well. Like right. Like if I think that these guys are that much better, like and have that much more win equity, I don't care what their ownership is. A lot of times, there's pivots this week. So I think that there there is a pivot this week in terms of those three guys, and it's Homa. Homa will definitely be one of the guys I I play. I just think it's silly not to. You're getting him at a you know slightly discounted number um, in terms of ownership because of the guys he's he's in between and people are gonna say uh, it's he's mispriced, which I could totally agree with. Um, I think you keep riding the home heater regardless of the course history. Just doesn't seem that that doesn't seem to matter to me in this situation. Uh, I full disclosure, like before I saw the ownership numbers, I was gonna jam Cantlay and Sung Jay into as many lineups as I could if they were the right numbers. Like they're the they're the superior talents and and price like that that start to me you can you can make work very easily. Uh, this week, uh, I'm going to dip into the six Ks. I think there's a a lot of people afraid of the six Ks this week. And um, I'm not, I am not, I will use that to get leverage. I like playing spots of the board that other people don't want to go to, or don't want to look at just because there's a number in front of it. Um, so let's, let's, let's keep continue to go, c- continue to go through here. Grillo. I totally would get, if you want to play him, he's just not like, He's not a guy I've really ever dabbled with. And uh, you're paying up for him. He's playing incredibly well. He's playing incredibly well. Uh, doesn't He actually looks like he's not like necessarily chalk. He's chalk. He, he's not like one of the chalkiest guys in this range. He's actually lower owned a lot to a lot of these guys around him. But I'd almost, I'd rather go to Cam Davis if this ownership is, is true. Um or I'd rather go to Alex Noren, Hoagie, or Harmon. And what stinks is I really was gonna play. T- I was gonna play another two to these three guys because I really liked what I initially saw from their ownership. But Davis Riley being the withdraw and fourteen percent ownership, you know, being having to be allocated elsewhere. A few of these guys are gonna pick up a little more steam, which stinks. Um, but again, I, I'll definitely play one of these three guys um, because I don't think all three of the, I don't think the 14% will be like perfectly distributed to those three guys. So uh, Pendrith, Pendrith, like maybe uh, I don't, I don't need to have Pendrith personally. Uh, See Wu like really just, um, Confidence is a hell of a drug, and he just took down JT in a fucking unbelievable match in the President's Cup. Uh, he's played here pretty well. He's a birdie-making machine. Yeah, he's got top 10 here. He's got two top 15s here um, since the past four years, and he's modeling out well for me. Where is he model out? 24th. And he's a birdie-making machine. I mean, he could win you or lose you your GPP pretty quickly, which is the type of guy I like. And 10%, to me, I'll swallow. Um it's not horrible, uh, honestly, as of right now. Uh, Berm Mess Meester, he's been popping for me a lot lately. Uh, he's been playing really well, uh, especially over on the Euro Tour. Uh, eight five nine eight ownership. I don't know, man. I mean, we'll see. I uh, we'll see. I, I feel like. He, Eight nine eight is a little high for his projected ownership, but I think a lot of people like that guy, and a lot of people have been talking about him from what I've listened to so far. This is a guy that I normally rip, not rip, but he just gets priced up so much, and everybody plays him. And it, I'm surprised if you know at eight four and eight at eight. I'm surprised this week he's eighty four hundred and eight point five three percent ownership. He's been playing really well. He's been doing it all putting. He's got a top 10 here. He's got a top 15 here. This is not me telling you to play Denny McCarthy, but God damn it. If there's a week to play Denny McCarthy and this ownership number is true, this is the week you do it. Not when he's 10, nearly $10,000 and like 15% of the fields playing him. Um, insanity, insanity. Uh, Poston, if this, 
if this number is legit at 4.86, it's funny to it's funny because 8.3, he's died back down in price. I'm big into where you're buying on these guys. Uh, he was lightning hot recently. And what, one bad tournament? He's got 15th, 35th. Tw- oh, 15th is at the Tournament of Champions. So take that with a girl. Well, 15th out of four is not horrible, honestly, especially for him. And he probably started wherever, you know. BMW 35th, FedEx Cup 20th, 21st. This guy literally played bad one tournament. He dropped so much in price recent. Like, posting might be like, I mean, I don't even, I'm not even a posting guy. But this just, just seems like one of those buyback situations. If, if again, these, these things are real, I think he's actually played here well, too. Finished fourth, finished 27th here. Very interesting how crazy people's minds work. He also, where's he model at? Just so I know, 39th. So paying a little high per my model. What, according to my model for him, slightly. Bazaden, who? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I look, I've, I, I guess he makes sense on this course, right? I mean, he doesn't hit the ball that far, should carry a little longer. Good around the green, good putter, makes a lot of birdies. It's just like, I, I'm not necessarily team Bez. Um, I think if you are, it's a good, good spot. The AK range is really intriguing to me because I think it's a range that uh, is going to get skipped over because of how juicy the not that nine, that first group, or I guess the second group I showed you, because I want to include Cam Davis because this grouping of players, I think is going to get so much ownership. Currently 21% each on average, basically up there. <clears throat> so a lot of guys, and, and when that happens, that means a lot of guys are playing two of these guys up top. And that means that they're going to have to skip like a range because they're not going to be able to get all the guy to get to all the guys they want. And that is, you know, this nine up this, this low end nine high end eight. And then like, like eight, five to eight looks like nobody really wants to play anybody. So yeah, I'd say out of these guys, I mean, JT Poston's the most appealing to me. Mitchell, like, I love from a number standpoint, I am a, like not necessarily like the biggest course history guy. I do, I am a course history truther, but I think there's a lot of people that think it's way more important than I do. Like, I think missing like four cuts is like a lot, like over oh, four. So, he models out well. He actually seems to me like a guy that would play well here. Um, yeah, I don't know with Mitchell. He's not highlighted for me right now. Dietrich is a misprice this week, 7,900. He's finished ninth and 12th in his last two starts. And then if you want to go, he also finished like 12th at the BMW, like the uh, not like the BMW in Europe, which is like one of the toughest field events in Europe all year. So Shocked that he went down in price to seven nine after finishing again ninth after finishing twelfth the week before. He's a birdie making machine. He doesn't really have a chink in his armor. Um, maybe maybe the flag stick at times. Maybe around like he can get really hot with his putter. I've seen him play around the green like, and he's he's good. He just kind of does everything well. Like he's the he's he's probably like the most seasoned, and it makes sense because he's like. He actually has won on the European tour. He's very well respected on the European tour. Um, he's the most seasoned of like all of these like new guys on tour. Uh, you know, I've been on him the past couple of weeks. It just seems like a, why would I jump off of him situation? Maybe that is, um, we'll, we'll come back to bite me, but I can get like seven, nine is a misprice and he's 13, nine. He's chalk. That's a chalk guy. But like, so again, some guy sometimes there's such thing as good chalk to me. He's a misprice. You can do your math games in terms of is this guy twice as likely to do this than that? No, but he's he's also priced lower than he should be. So, in my opinion, Dietrich should be priced if like Dietrich should be priced at at eighty like eighty three or eighty four. Nah, probably eighty probably eighty eighty three, but still. He's playing incredible golf. That's part of the reason why, like, on ev- every tour. So, and he fin- like, he finished fourth, like, in the Corn Ferry Tour finals to get his card, which was also really recent. So, he's playing, again, great golf. I don't see a reason to sell on him unless this ownership number gets out of control. Very well, easily could. 
Um, and then I'll have to go elsewhere potentially. Uh, Mito, he's just a long term buy to me. Models out well, like he always does. Finish 40th here. Uh, buying low, not everybody's buying on him. He maybe because he, he's not like a birdie making machine, and this this could get like really high in that regard. I think he's a guy that will play tougher courses, like in terms of lower scoring conditions, well, better because he's such a goddamn good ball striker. But not a, not a reason for me to sell. Not a reason for me not to buy on him. Excuse me, uh, especially with like I liked KH Lee, I liked Hadwin, and I liked Power. KH Lee, fifteen percent. I it's a lot of juice. You're nobody ever plays KH Lee really, and now this week everybody wants to play him. Seems somewhat like a recipe for disaster. I totally get it. Like he's got good course history here. Um, TPC Lee. Uh, but 15%. And if I'm already playing Dietrich, I don't think I want to play Dietrich and Lee. So for that reason, I'm most likely going to be out on Lee. Um, but we'll see. Hadwin, I'm not 10%. Doesn't make me say no to him. Seamus, I just thought was going to be way less own, I guess, because he finished 30th. But like finished 30th and he didn't really hit the ball that well, like in terms of his iron. So that's why I thought he'd be less own. But it's the Las Vegas narrative. He's a Vegas guy. He's played this course. Um, so I get that as well. Uh, Kucher honestly seems like maybe a safe play. Fucking hate Kucher, though. Uh, Moore is another misprice to me, and he's a misprice that's still like, like getting slightly under like he's a miss misprice and not everybody's playing him i think that very easily could change and will change but this guy dropped like a thousand in salary after finishing 24th last week and he's played here before and he's finished 24th and he just like doesn't really like he's one of those guys that i say this about a lot he doesn't really do one thing great but he doesn't really do anything poorly Hardy, I was on last week. His ball striking numbers were great last week. 12% scares me a little bit. Um, There's so many good options, right? So I will be the first person to eat chalk if I don't see, like, guys that I like to pivot to. And this is a week where I actually do see a lot of pivots, whereas, like, the past couple weeks, haven't seen as, as many pivots, at least at the top of the board. Been a ton of pivots at the bottom of the board. But there's a lot of, like... Wow, I'm surprised Kitayama is not higher for all the hype he's been getting. UNLV guy too, but uh, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, there's so many good options, right? Like, do I like like KH Lee? Yeah, do I want do I want to play Nick Hardy because he played well last week and I was on him last week? Yeah, but he's like twelve point two one percent, and Taylor Moore, I just think is playing better golf than Nick Hardy is over a longer period of time. Um, it's going to be way less. It's going to be less known. So that's kind of how I see it. Herbert's really interesting to me this week. <clears throat> he never models out well. So basically throw that in the fucking garbage and listen to, listen to me. Um, I, he's a birdie making machine. He hits the ball a fucking mile. He, is a great putter and he's got good around the green game. This course doesn't really, isn't really that penal off the tee. He obviously can't be hitting into the fucking desert, but I think as long as he drives the ball well this week, and that's, you know, you can say that about a fucking probably a lot of guys. I think he could be a very good, good play with a lot of upside. I just think he's a birdie maker. Um, and if you're going to tell me there's a course that a guy can kind of hit the ball wherever he wants and isn't going to be really penalized for it. Uh, then give me Lucas Herbert as long again as long as he doesn't hit in the desert. Woodland's numbers are like really good right now, um, and he hit the ball fucking incredibly well. Lost like five strokes putting last week. Uh, interesting, interesting play this week. I think you, Woodland is the play that if I play him this week. He will miss the cut, and if I don't, he will finish top 10. So I'll let you guys know what I decide with Woodland, and then you guys just do the opposite. Uh, 
But all kid, kidding aside, I mean, his numbers, he ball struck the fuck out of it last week. He just couldn't buy it. He couldn't hit a putt. And he's actually has a few good finishes, 10th and an 18th here, um, which is surprising because, like, it's a birdie fest, and I don't see good Woodland necessarily as a guy who, like, performs well on birdie fest, but he's performed well here before. So uh, kick rocks, Kyle. Um, Hubbard, I get. I would get going back to. He's playing really well right now. Uh, makes a lot of birdies. Uh, he, so, t- you know, 10% ownership. Again, just this week, there's just a lot of guys – that um are way less owned that are interesting to me so we'll see again i'm not gonna not like uh, there's going to be a chalk guy or two i play in this range i've told you i don't like like i don't like just saying like everybody i'm gonna play but like dietrich to me just makes sense i'm gonna play him um so like just i just wanted to give the example of like it's okay to play chalk I, i could come back to bite me chalk and when it does, you're like, oh, that was a stupid fucking play. But a lot of times it gets there or a guy gets there. And I'm not saying to take my red guys and play all of them. I'm actually saying to like probably play like take like two of them or three of them and play them. So just take that all in mind, right? Like out of all of these guys in red, one, two, who, and they're like the guys you want to play the most. But this is where you need to be disciplined. This is where over a long term, long period of time, you'll have more success. You can't just play the eye candy all the time because that's what everybody else is going to do. So. Yeah, I want to play Cantley. Yeah, I want to play him. Yeah, I want to play Tom Kim. Yeah, I want to play Montgomery. Um, they're the shiny new – well, these guys are shiny new toys. These guys are the, the best players in the field. Um, but I can't play all of them. And if I do play one of them, I need to figure out how to get my lineup to a point where I don't, where it won't be duped. So, uh, yeah, just – just things to consider um, when, when looking here. So I'm just going to, I've pretty much just haven't really, I've just gone through everybody um, this week, first, first week of the year. So I, I said, I'd do a deep dive. So I'll keep doing it. Sue, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy on Justin Sue. Justin Sue two weeks ago was the, was, was Taylor Montgomery was better than was, was he, was he, I think he was better than Taylor Montgomery too. I think I was one of the people saying he was better than Taylor Montgomery. Um, but I, I think he, he has a lot of corn fairy tour pedigree two weeks ago. Again, he was, you know, everybody's person. He was the next guy to break on the scene. He's 7,400. You're buying low on him. He's 4% owned. He, not, a, not anybody else is going back to him. He's got a eighth place finish here. And no, your model is going to tell you he's playing like shit. Because he, he has played like shit the past two weeks, but golfers figure this shit out very quickly. They get on courses they feel comfortable at, and they just like that, it clicks. I will buy back on a guy that I think has very high upside, and, and, and not even very high upside. Upside, we don't necessarily know yet. So, uh, yeah, give me Justin Sue. Throw your model out for him. Throw your model out for Herbert. Uh, Merit, I get. Maybe. I kind of like spawn a little more than merit. Um, I kind of like Putnam more than I like both of both of them. Um, I've just been kind of like riding this Putnam heater and until he shoots me in the foot, which could happen because he's Andrew Putnam. Um, I'm just going to keep riding it. He, he 11th here, 18th here, 58th here. He's made his last three cuts here. He's a great putter. Um, He's not really great off the tee. Maybe, maybe you know, the ball carries a little further for him. There's not a penal as off the, off the tee, and he's able to make even more birdies here. So, uh, I'm going to continue to play him. He's he's definitely a little higher on than I like, but he's he, he anything sub temp for me down here with with the guys I'm going to pair him with is not scary. Um, Nick Taylor is very interesting if you're looking for some leverage. Uh, Models out 58, but he play he's playing really well over his last two, as you can see by by the results as well. Ninth, ninth and sixteenth. He's he's played here decently and he's really low owned. Um it's it's sometimes sometimes it's you know like by uh, like if you just sometimes a short term form, if nobody else is like pick picking it, it's a reason to ride a guy, like ride the guy's heater. Um and he's played well here before. Uh I'm not saying I'm in on him. I'm not saying I'm out on him. We'll see. Kirk seems like a misprice to me. Uh, and he's not getting ownership that's ter- totally turning me off yet. But I think that could change. I think Kirk could get to 10. And I think uh, I think Putnam could get to, you know, 8, eight five, nine. 
hopefully neither of them, hopefully neither of them do, but I could see it. Svensson, uh, I think he's a long-term buy, but I don't see him as a guy that's going to get to 20 under. I just, I don't, uh, he doesn't make a lot of putts. And because of that, I'm out on him. I do think it's a great play this week. Like this is exactly when you want to play Svensson. He's 7,200 models out 30th for me over time. He's 2.5%. Oh, maybe I need to reconsider. Um, but again, I, I, you know, look, dig into it more. That's just my thought is like, he doesn't make a lot of putt, but like a lot of guys are like that. So Ben on who I have highlighted is the same fucking way as Svensson is and he's higher owns. Um, and he models out worse. So maybe Svensson is the better play than, than being on on. Sometimes you got to talk through these things and uh, figure it out. So like, I, like I might've just done there, but Svens, Bianchan on one made cut, nothing to write home about. Laird, like in terms of course history, uh, might have the best. Uh, might be worth a flyer if you're a Party Marty guy. Uh, I like Party Marty. I just don't know. I don't know like what I'm thinking there right now. Might buy a little Party Marty at that number, that ownership. Jaeger's a guy I've been playing. I might just can kind of continue to keep playing. He finished 30th last week, but he was extremely high DFS scoring. Like one of the highest, like almost made the optimal highest, um, which sometimes is more important than finishing position. Makes a lot of birdies. He's played here before. He's got a 20th here. He's also missed a cut twice, but uh, he just seems to be playing really good golf right now. He's played here before and the ownership doesn't scare me away. Um, there so i'm gonna i'm gonna continue to play him uh rye i always like um but it just doesn't seem like a birdie fest to me i'm not gonna play him he also surprisingly doesn't model out well for me which is shocking because he always models out well for me um say young kim yeah i mean this is these results he's made the cut the past the two events he's played so these, yeah um I don't know why it's not picking that up. Uh, he's a macro buy for me. I think he's good. I think he's good around the green. I think he's a birdie maker. Um, and I think he makes a lot of putts. And he's 24 years old, South Korean guy. We don't really know that much about him. Sign me up. If that, I think that ownership number is off. I think that's going to be 5%. Um, but I could also be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Gordon. Nukes the ball. I like Gordon. Um, he's another guy. I could see that 3-7 being a little higher maybe. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. So, uh, Shelton, it, like, makes a lot of sense to me. I don't know anything about this guy, though. Like, I'm saying he makes a lot of sense to me from the stats perspective. I haven't really watched him yet. But, like, two made cuts here. Two made cuts in his first two starts. Modeling out pretty well, pretty cheap, pretty low owned. Um, maybe, probably not, but maybe he's like, he's like just like not a really like a uh, appealing play. But sometimes you just got to play those guys. I think I might play Nick Taylor though, and if I do that, I don't need two like totally boring guys. Like I got it covered with Nick Taylor, just from a golf perspective, could be a great guy and really entertaining. Um, <clears throat> Domin, Domin, Domin. Finished thirteenth last week. That was the quietest thirteenth of all time. Uh, he's seventy one hundred. He's two four. I'm gonna highlight Domin. I mean, he he he's modeling out bad long term, but I know like like actually long term, he's actually better than a lot of these golfers uh, down in this area, and might maybe might 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 get there. Buckley, I like again. He's slightly high owned. Davis Thompson. He's good. Take that for what you want. I'm actually surprised this number is 1.36. If I had to guess, it was because he was around 10% ownership last week in, in the in the bigger uh, GPPs. And he had a bad one, like really bad day. He like started the tournament actually pretty well. And then he had one really bad day. He, I, I, I played him. He could not play the back. He was like getting off the three under starts and then would bogey like the last three holes in the back nine. Um, so that, that could have infuriated some people too, but he's a long-term buy for me. Um, and one, I will probably buy this week, Caleb Taron. I don't know why you wouldn't play Caleb Taron at this point. He 
models out incredibly well over a long term period of time, which is important. Um, and he's low owned and, and he's just like, Oh, like if, if you make, he's just like, he's had, well, let's just look at it before I make something up. 13th last week, cut, cut 27th, 20th, 7th. So he's playing really well. And like, those are some of those were big events. Uh, I'm buying this guy, Zay Cheng Dao. People may think I'm crazy. I think this guy lives at the top of leaderboards, made the cut twice already. Uh, I've I've played him both weeks. It doesn't make sense for me to not continue to play him, especially because his ownership is even lower this week. Hodges, I was on last. I've been on the past few weeks. His ball striking numbers look great. He actually has a good finish here, 27th. Could be a good guy to consider. Bramlett, Vegas guy. I don't know if I'm there. Uh, he actually does kind of pop. Is he playing well again? Is he played here? His putting scares the shit out of me. Camp Champ, same situation. Uh, the Godfather. It's pretty interesting. He's 69. Uh, 100, that is. And he's low owned. A lot of people love Todd. He also had a ninth, like two uh matt wallace played well here last year carl juan um got her up i might get to got her up it's really interesting how a six thousand price tag maybe scares like this would this just makes me want to play got her more like i'm surprised more people like people see the six and like get a fr- like got her feeling like pushing 10 percent for a long time i know he he came down a little bit um he came down a little bit recently but uh i'm just surprised that number isn't isn't higher it might be pushed higher he models out really well for me he's a newer guy on tour take the modeling for with a grain of salt so until you get you know a lot of a lot of a lot of concrete statistics i probably have more statistics on him than i do other guys uh so interesting that he's not really um getting a whole lot of love i don't think he's a great putter um so that's one thing but yeah we'll see i hate james Hahn. he kind of makes sense to me this week he's played well here before he's cheap he's nobody's playing him he's a dirt bag but that's fine um uh he go he his ball striking numbers were insane last week uh, nobody wanted anything to do with him last week. Now he's close to 5% ownership. Look, if it's a course, you can drive the ball wherever you want and you need to be a good putter. It, it makes sense that he, he go, he go for me. I'm, you know, if that number stays sub five, I'll probably play a little he go, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, Lipsky just like is better than that price. He's just playing like dog shit. Uh, Brandon Wu, odd to me. He's 6,600 after finishing 39th last week and being 7,000. Ryder, 6,600 after finishing 45th last week. He actually has really good course history. and Nobody's fucking playing him. Could get myself into uh, him. Harry Hall is like a member of some shit here. He played really well here last year. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get there. Kevin Yu is a guy I really like. I'm uh, actually hoping, well, nobody listens to this anyway. So uh, I don't like want, like, I think he's a really talented player. He's a great ball striker. I know that. I don't know what he is from a, from the around the green putting standpoint yet. Uh, I've actually just like watched him, uh, made it a point of focus to keep my eyes off on you and Seyoung Kim. Uh, because I I just kind of felt like they could be guys who are younger in terms of age and that have a lot of upside and that not a lot of people have been playing and they got their guys I've been playing and will continue to play until other people catch on. Um, but you is a great ball striker. He's 24 years old. He's from China's China Taipei. Uh, 19th last week. Oh, he missed the cut in his first event, but he ball struck the fuck out of it. Finished 27th here last year. He's 6,500. He's one percent owned. If you have any faith in me, um, you know, play him in one lineup. If not, keep his low ownership 
low for me. Shank makes sense to me. Great course history. He's cheap as fuck. Uh, not playing horribly. Smotherman, cheap, 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 uh, low ownership again. I just, uh, it's interesting. He's made a lot. He's playing like pretty decently. He's hitting the ball pretty well and is he's staying low owned and low priced. Um, Lashley, same way. Two made cuts, but low, low priced. Uh, and then I think the last guy worth talking about uh, is Ben Griffin, who pops significantly for me. But part of that's just to do with the fact that I don't have a lot of data on him. Um, but let me tell you what what these these bad boys, my eyes, my eyes have seen, um, which I put I put a lot of weight into, especially this time of year in the fall. Um, and it's part of the reason I like the fall is because it takes sometimes it takes uh, a little bit of time for uh, a lot of really sharp people to identify uh, players in their, in their models eventually. And a, a lot of sharp people do this as well. A lot of sharp people are very good at figuring this stuff out. This is not, I'm just, I just, from a numbers and a modeling perspective, sometimes in the beginning of the year, just keep your eyes on guys, right? Like watch these guys actually hit the ball because a model isn't going to tell you all that much in two rounds or four rounds or eight rounds. You're going to need a lot of data. You're going to need data on these guys, even, even for the guys that, you know, I have like Kevin, you, for example, who I've seen play in two straight tournaments and he has good stats and two straight tournaments from a ball striking perspective. I'm going to continue to buy on that because, because pe people that I know that know golf on top of DFS think that this kid's legit. Um, and to me, uh, you know, 1%, 6.5, guy finished 27th here last year, ball striking. Uh, yeah, and he's 6,500. I can jam pretty much. It opens your lineup for so much when you put a $6,500 guy who's 1% owned in there. So much. Obviously, like you're taking a little more risk, but you could argue, just like I, you know, I, I love to argue, we don't like know whose prices are right and wrong um, in the long term yet. For a lot of these guys and Kevin used one of them. We don't know, right? He hasn't played them. He's 24 years old. He hasn't played that many tournaments on the PGA tour. He's played two. So 6,500, he could, he could end up being like a 7,800 guy in a, in a, you know, in a few weeks. And now you're getting a seven, a guy who's actually should be 7,800 and 1% owned uh, in your lineup for 6,500. So just uh, things to keep an eye on. But Ben Griffin, to me, from what my eyes have seen on top of, you know, two good finishes, this is at the Wyndham. This was last week. He's a good putter, um, and he's good around the green. Uh, and those are two things. I think you're just like, those are two things that if you're good at this week, you're going to be able to keep yourself out of a lot of trouble. Uh, you're also going to need to hit good approach. You're going to need to hit the ball good off the tee. But I think the top, like the the places you can get yourself in the most trouble here, will be uh, around and on on the greens, m m more so around the green. So I think that having that you know ability to get up and down from a lot of different places, from what I've seen with these eyes, uh, and the numbers actually tell me that for Ben Griffin, for for the for the numbers I can look at, that he's that he's a good around the green player. Sixty two hundred. What was his ownership number? One point four nine. One point four nine uh bye yeah got it uh and if you don't think this crazy man is throwing ben griffin and kevin you in the same lineup in a few in a few lineups and having like five four three per three and a half percent ownership and i can play probably whoever the fuck else i want in that lineup with a ton of salary left uh you don't know me you know nothing about me i i think this I'm going to play a lot of 6K guys. I always play a lot of 6K guys. Uh, I don't go out of my way to do that, but I think that people are just afraid of the six. They don't want to dip into that. So if, you, if you're six, if you're 6,000, you suck at golf. That's what people think. Um, and a lot of times that's true. A lot of times that's true. But if you do a little bit of digging, if you do a little bit of deep diving, you can find things uh, that make these guys way more appealing than 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 you'd initially initially think right um and there's other guys brandon matthews for example 6300 after finishing 39th last week if you're a believer that the driving distance is going to matter this week take this guy and put him in fucking stuff you know put him in 10 lineups or whatever because he hits the ball a fucking mile just finished 39th he fall struck the fuck out of it um 
he's cheap as fuck. And, you know, this number is clearly off. He's going to be higher than 0% owned, I'm guessing. Uh, but uh, he's going to be really low owned, really low price. And he's another guy that we don't necessarily know for certain if this is the right price on him yet. Um, nor do we know if Montgomery is the right price or Tom Kim. I am a huge Tom Kim truther. I love I love this guy for for a variety of reasons and and mostly because of the money he he he's he's made uh me me personally but also he just seems great for the game of golf and isn't seems like he could be uh you know one of these generational talents again could be um but these guys prices both could be wrong i could be wrong about tom kim tom kim might you know fall off a cliff or whatever and 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 you know when he's 23 years old he might be back down to like a 6700 guy so you could be buying way too high on these guys and you always got to look at where it, it, if you're buying high on them or other people buying high on them, well, this week they are. So interesting to consider um, from all of those perspectives. I would, I would say this week um, my, after going through, through everything before I let everybody go uh, you're going to like, I, I, I don't think you fade the top. I don't think you fade the big three. Uh, I I'm always a believer in, in not like if there's a guy who just says clearly more win equity than everybody else and is getting more ownership. I, if there's not a clear pivot, I'm, I'm, I believe you play that guy this week. I think there is a pivot, which is why I will play like two of the three guys. I think uh, depending on the ownership in terms of Cantlay, Homa and Sungjae. Um, But, you know, we'll see. And the reason I say this, because those three guys have a ton of win equity to me. So I, again, would not fade all three of them in your player pool. I would play one, at least one of them, um, maybe two, unless the ownership gets out of control. Uh, and uh, there, there's there's places you can go to make, make up for the ownership this week. And a place you could go to be very different if you like really like Cantlay or, or Sungjae this week is – you know, rather than go Sung Jay, Tom Kim, or Patrick Cantlay, uh, Sung Jay, and have 61% ownership between those two guys, go Cantlay, uh, Cantlay uh, Norrin, or Cantlay Harmon. And that way you, you immediately get down to like 42% between your, your top two, first two guys in your lineup. And then you, you you are able to build towards a lineup that is not going to be duped. So just just things to things to think about. I think it is important to get one of those top three guys in there this week. Uh, definitely this week, uh, you're going to want to see Wednesday night ownership projections, uh, especially with you know the Davis Riley example I gave, and just something to keep an eye out for. More generally speaking. Um, if a guy withdraws and you're still seeing ownership there, that ownership has to go somewhere else to other players on the board. Um, so it will it will change other players' ownership on top of theirs, especially when it's a perceived potentially chalky guy like Davis Riley was going to be here. Um, so uh, it, it's just, you know, you're going to want to look at the ownership numbers again tomorrow. You're going to want to double check whether tomorrow uh, play the guys you like, make sure you're you, – you, you know, you're playing them in, in, in ways that, that make you different, that make you unique. I think there's a ton, a ton of um, value in, in, in the pivots this week, which where I haven't necessarily seen that as much again, especially at the top in, in other weeks. Um, but I think that there's a lot of cool things that can be done with lineups this week. I think the pricing, pricing is better. Um but just talk yourself through some of these things, right? Make sure the make sure that when you're constructing the lineup, like when you're looking at it, you you, you you're just like thinking about it from the, like how much how much is that lineup's ownership going to be, um, give or take, um, and always do a give or take because projections are wrong, um, even even for the people that do them the best. So if you're going off somebody's projections and you're saying my lineup's going to be 65% owned or whatever it is, and then guess what? The projections were 15% off, and your lineup ends up being like 75% or 80% owned, you're going to be fucking pissed because then you're like, oh, well, I built this lineup to be X percent owned, but it actually wasn't. So if you're building a lineup towards X percentage, which you shouldn't, which you should and shouldn't do, you need to, you need to, it, it, it's, it's all based about how many people you're going against. Um, it, you just want to, you just want to think about those types of things. So I'm mumbling. I missed everybody. Uh, hopefully there was a lot of good information here. 
for for people to pick up on. Hopefully, I talked about a few guys that you could tell I liked and uh, and all of that good stuff. And and yeah, good luck this week. Uh, and we'll we'll be back throughout the year. I'm going to try to bring cooler people than just me on um, to talk golf. I have horrible ADHD, as I talk about a lot. I think having another person to kind of go off the wall with keeps me on track with things a lot uh, and keeps, keeps things more fluid. And uh, there's just a lot of smart people out there that uh, it, talk about this type of stuff. And I enjoy talking about this type of stuff with uh, that. I, I would, I would like to get on here and Oh, that actually one, one more thing before I get out of here, uh, not related to golf, but good, good kind of friend of mine from, from the DFS world, Scarecrow second, second, in the Millie maker yesterday in NFL or, or in, excuse me, Sunday last weekend in the NFL, uh, he keeps a low radar. He's a wicked, wicked smart guy. He's helped me a lot with understanding, um, you know, certain things with DFS principles, math, uh, modeling. Uh, he's, he's, he, I've, I've been picking his brain a little for NFL. Maybe I'll go there, uh, one day, but uh, for now it's, it's going to continue to be mostly golf golf for me, but, uh, just want to say shouts to him. Uh, on a big bank, second place in the in the Millie. So shouts shouts to him. Uh, good luck this week. I'm hoping to get some some scarecrows luck. Uh, hopefully his luck stick, stays up, and hopefully uh, everybody out there uh, you know does does well for themselves as well this week. Uh, Godspeed.